Hi, and welcome to another episode of Discussing Niche Internet Aesthetics. Today we will be attempting to do what nobody has ever done before. I was initially thinking to make several videos discussing all fashion aesthetics that exist on the interwebs, but when I saw the colossal number of 365 fashion aesthetics that exist on the aesthetics fandom page, I thought to myself, maybe that's a bit too much. So instead we will try to only offer one to two minutes for each aesthetic and also try to rank them because we do love a bit of ranking. If you're not aware, living in confinement made people go a little bit crazy with labeling any kind of aesthetic that can exist. The biggest ones, of course, are cottagecore and dark academia, but there's so much more than that. Every day I go on TikTok and there's just another aesthetic that pops up on my For You page. And it's something very hyper-specific, like going to the grocery stores to buy two eggs and one celery, but I only slept three hours and I'm meeting my grandma today. And although I do understand the necessity of giving a name for a very specific kind of aesthetic to be able to find it easier and to be able to incorporate it into your daily life, some of this kind of gets ridiculous. So let's look at our categories for today. The first one is, of course, cultural reset. You already kind of suspect which one I will put there. These are for the aesthetics that really change the course of history. This is something that is easily recognizable, Is this is something that I just tell you the name and you can easily visualize in your head what it means. And these are also just my personal favorites, which is gonna be very subjective. If you're someone that looks for a very objective, impartial analysis of internet aesthetics, this might not be it. I am ranking all of these aesthetics based on my preferences, but also I'm trying to be a bit analytical as well. Just don't come for me if I put your favorite aesthetic in a category that you don't like. The second category is kind of slay. This is a category that is not necessarily a cultural reset, like it is not as culturally important as Beyonce or the Renaissance, but it is kind of slay. Like I can understand why people might go for it. It kind of looks good and I can respect their vibe. The third category is okay, fine. These are the categories which I understand their functionality, I understand why they exist, I understand why some people might like it, but I just don't feel anything strong towards them. So I am okay with their existence, but it's okay if we exist on parallel planes. The fourth category is going to be I feel like a millennial. So I am the kind of person that was born in this weird period between Gen Z and Millennials, and I don't really adhere to any of those two categories. So on the one hand, Gen Z will say that my jokes are cringe. On the other hand, Millennials will say that my jokes are way too Gen Z. Like I will laugh at that TikTok with Shrek in the sky, but I can also indulge into some Millennial humor from time to time. There's nothing wrong with that. So these aesthetics will make me feel like a millennial, will make me feel like I am old, will make me debate saying, maybe that phone in your hand is the problem. Maybe you should go out. And the fourth and last category is just crickets. It's for those aesthetics that I really don't have anything to say. I just don't like them. I might think they should not exist. This is again, very personal. Please don't come for me. But I basically just think that Maybe they're not that good. Maybe I don't like them aesthetically. Maybe I don't like them conceptually. We will see. We will see. So we have all our ranks. So let's just dive into it. So of course, God is working hard, but the girlies at aestheticsfandom.com are working harder. So they have 365 fashion aesthetics categorized with description, pictures, literature influence, music influence, and they are all put in alphabetical order. So this is what we will do. We will just take them one by one in alphabetical order, find out what they are about, and hopefully rank them. So we start off not even by A, but by numbers. It's that serious. We start with 2000s autumn aesthetic. And what we see is already a good sign. We see Miss Bella Hadid, uh, I'm sorry, Bella Swan from the Twilight series with her butt on the ice. 
plastic bella move. How the hell have you been, Loka? Commonly known as Twilight Core or Elena Gilbert Core, 2000s Autumn is an aesthetic that rose to prominence in Autumn 2021 on TikTok. The trend is primarily focused on fashion of the late 2000s, specifically emulating Bella Swan from the Twilight franchise and Elena Gilbert from the Vampire Diaries. It also touches on the Gilmore Girls. So we have key values of nostalgia, romanticization of fall, the woods, school, vampires. Getting harder and harder to incorporate vampires into your personal aesthetic these days. In terms of fashion, we have light jackets with dark colors, long-sleeved shirts, dark jean pants, leather jackets, slip-on sneakers, tank tops, gloves or mittens, can't forget those Bella Swan gloves. I guess a common activity would be hanging out in the cemetery, like Elena Gilbert in that pilot episode of Vampire Diaries. Overall, I think it's pretty iconic, and I think because Twilight was such a cultural reset for the humanity, I think I will put 2000s Autumn in cultural reset. We start off with a very strong one, it's gonna be hard to top it. So the next one is 2020 Alt, it's a fashion style that originally became popular on TikTok and later spread out to other apps such as Pinterest. Wow, what a non-definition. Literally like any other aesthetic. I will be needing more than that, unfortunately. So the decade of origin is early 2020s, which is giving me big vibes of I feel like a millennial rank. Key motifs are cartoons, anime, TikTok, monster energy. Its fashion includes bunny frog heads, striped patterns, arm leg warmers, ripped fishnets, tights, knee-high socks, demonious shoes, black high top converse, pajamas, pleated skirts, oversized sweatshirts, chokers, garters, and cat ears. Some related aesthetics are pastel goth, goblin core, e-boy, e-girl, cyber goth. Honestly, I think this one might go into the I feel like a millennial category. I, I really don't understand how this one is different from, for example, e-girl. Sorry. Next, we're going into the A letter and we have Acid Pixie. Acid Pixie molds together elements of biopunk, void punk, and specific elements of new goth and indie. All words I don't know. All right. Key motifs are trippy visuals, overlapping colors, occultist imagery, the fashion is composed by light or dark eyeshadow with contrasting lipstick, white freckles, neon hair colors, fresh shaved head, pigtails, paste buns, unusual hairstyles and colors, very many pixie dream girl vibes, flower crowns or mushroom brooches, large chunky earrings of various sorts. Okay, we got it. So it's basically very trippy, very, very colorful, basically the romanticization of taking substances, which is a bit crickets for me. I think this is giving crickets energy, like this is giving very much 2014 Tumblr, I want to be special kind of vibe. The Acid Pixie aesthetic is in many ways similar to the Indie Kid aesthetic, however, there is a natural element in the Acid Pixie aesthetic and a certain unsettling, almost ethereal edge. No, I'm sorry. Adventure Core. Adventure Core involves adventure, groundbreaking, the great unknown and exploration. The main theme and philosophy are encouraging curiosity and having a yearning to see it all. It often focuses on the outdoors and wild landscapes. The original creator Tumblr user Adventure, now deactivated, has stated it's about the idea of navigating the world like you're a pro tag about to set off on a big cross-country journey, even if you live in the suburbs. So you know it's good stuff when it originates on Tumblr. Or is it? The aesthetics are beanies, picnic caps, cloaks, ponchos, shawls, scarves, denim cargo ride jackets and pants, docks, sneakers, tennis shoes, long coats, spats, gaiters, satchels, bandoliers. What is a bandolier? Mm, how is this adventure? I'm not sure I like this one. Mm, I'm not sure. I was very open-mindedly kind of approaching this aesthetic, but now I'm like, okay, what are you trying to hunt in your adventure? Honestly, this just looks to me like white girl fashion. <laughs> And for music, we also have, of course, Bon Iver. I think, yeah, yeah, 
I think I got the gist of this aesthetic. So what is it gonna be? I think this aesthetic is the antithesis of I feel like a millennial because this might be a millennial aesthetic. It's giving very millennial vibes. So most probably it will go in okay fine, but the bandolier is making me put it into the crickets. I'll forgive this one. I'm, I'm putting it in okay fine. Next is Afro-Victorian. We wanted to reflect the diversity with our costume decision. We aim for this fusion of 19th century silhouettes with African culture. He refers to the look as Afro-Victorian, adding in the world of fantastical, the story worked on such a completing human level that we really wanted to reach out to audiences and offer them something very appealing and modern. The decade of origin is 2020, so it's very fresh. So it basically comes from the Netflix holiday musical Jingle Jangle. The visuals are Ohorokova dresses and headscarf, and the garments look absolutely gorgeous. I like the concept, I like the colors. I've never seen the show, but now at this point I'm very interested. Interested. It's kind of slight. Next, we're going into Afrofuturism. It's an aesthetic centered around an Afrocentric view of the future. It shares some similarity to solar punk, which is something of a misnomer itself, since solar punk is a less dystopian worldview compared to cyberpunk and buys into the philosophy that the future is black. Afrofuturism is one of the rare aesthetics that can encompass the visual medium, fashion, the written word, and music, and tackles themes such as feminism alienation from your people, the grotesque, water symbolism, and reclamation of one's identity through their roots. Gorgeous! Now let's see the clothes. It draws heavily upon traditional African prints and colors and adapts them to more modern and fashion-forward clothing style to create a distinctly African identity, often looking like a real-life superhero in the process. But don't confuse the two, please. Afrofuturist fashion is a form of self-expression, not an attempt for them to become vigilantes. It's a kind of slay, yeah. Agro people. Brazilian terms that refer to people working in the agri business. Hmm. Not always used in a positive way. The words are constantly used in songs, often those consumed by so called agro girls, agro boys. Its origin is usually credited to the mixture between Brazilian country culture and Brazilian 2000s urban culture. The aesthetic was become popular by the rise of sertanejo music and photo music for university students due to many people born in the country countryside, moving to urban contexts for education and work opportunities. Those people were usually sons and daughters of well-heeled property owners. They didn't want to let go of their traditions, but have the dream and money to adapt to big city ways. Eventually, the aesthetic spread back to the actual farm fields, probably due to those people coming back home. Oh, that's a very interesting aesthetic, and I love that we get to learn about the culture of other countries through these aesthetics. But when looking at the pictures, though, it's kind of giving crickets. So I guess this is a way to make fun of these people. Not really sure how to categorize this one, but unfortunately it does give off more of a crickets vibes because of the pictures that were used. So please don't be mad at me. So we move on to alien aesthetic. Alien is an aesthetic inspired by extraterrestrial and otherworldly life forms, particularly in relating with these creatures, wanting to be these creatures and not feeling in tune with humanity. It has themes of isolation, a lack of belonging, and rebelling against social norms, and elements of it can be found in fashion, music, video games, and sci-fi movies. Oh, the little I don't belong here alien picture. The fashion is alien artworks, prints on shirts, leggings, and accessories, vintage UFO shirts, holographic dresses and jackets, neon colors, antenna headbands, green, blue, or cyan face paint. Honestly, for me, it would go a little bit into the crickets category because that's not my personal favorite aesthetic, but I do understand that some people might like it. And it also is a little bit hyper-specific. Like, I think alien merchandise can be part of a bigger aesthetic, like maybe, um, I don't know, space core. But it does happen to have just one hyperfixation on just one thing. So I'm adding it to, okay, fine. Sometimes you just need a little bit of green alien vibes in your life. And that's okay. Next, we have alternative. Now, this one, I know. <laughs> Alternative, also known as alt, is an umbrella term that can describe anything that sits outside of the mainstream. This could include punk, grunge, emo, etc. Sometimes if a subculture is particularly popular, rock is an example of this, alternative rock would be its own subgenre outside of mainstream rock. It is important to know that most aesthetics could fall under the alternative label nowadays. Additionally, the line between alternative and mainstream is becoming very blurred due to the power of the internet in promoting underground artists. 
alternative originated as a genre of music described by Miriam Webster as music that is produced by performers who are outside the musical mainstream that is typically regarded as more eclectic, original, or challenging than most popular music. Alternative fashion is similar to that of punk and goth. Music is the central element, while fashion and visuals are optional. However, the label alternative fashion has evolved to mean any fashion outside of the mainstream. When most people think of alternative fashion, they think of punk, goth, or emo fashion. Honestly, cultural reset. You can't, like, you can't deny it. It's something that is part of the history books at this point and that's just a no-brainer for me. Americana. Americana is a loosely defined aesthetic which consists of music, artifacts, scenery, folklore, and material culture which are seen as distinctly or especially American, of or relating to what is now the United States and its inhabitants. First thing that comes into my mind is, of course, Lana Del Rey, our queen and savior, that was wearing mesh masks. Fashion is real leather jackets, moto jackets, vests. Items are often custom embroidered to signify personal values and loyalties. T-shirts, tank tops, bejeweled items are common depending on where the gang is located, especially for women. Heavy leather boots, riding clothes, helmets, hoodies, jackets, warm clothes for cold rides studs, bandanas, chains, protective gear. I think this is one of those classic aesthetics that people usually know about, but is it really a cultural reset? Yeah, I think it can go there. Androgynous. Androgyny is the combination of masculine and feminine characteristics, making them into an ambiguous form. I like the aesthetics of being an ambiguous form. I think this will be my preferred aesthetics, to be honest. Just ambiguous form. Slime core. Androgyny in terms of clothing style may be expressed without regard to biological sex, gender identity, gender expression or sexual identity. I think every girl should, at least once in her life, either shave their hair or cut their hair very, very short, like in a pixie cut. Because when I did it, honestly, it just really makes you understand more who you are and what kind of visuals you like. Because what I, I thought, I would really go for these more androgynous looks, and I was going from time to time, but at the same time, I really leaned maybe even more hard into my femininity while I was having this short hair. So it really made me understand that I preferably like more feminine aesthetics to wear. And honestly, the length of the hair um, doesn't really change anything. So androgynous people dress or style themselves to look neither typically male nor female. The goal of dressing androgynously on purpose is to have an ambiguous gender appearance where people don't automatically assume that you're a female or a male because it is difficult to know. This being said, biological sex does play a part in dressing androgynously. AFAB people dress typically more traditionally masculine and AMAP people typically dress more traditionally feminine. To reiterate, the androgynous aesthetic is not a gender identity, rather it is a form of dress. Honestly, cultural reset. I love the androgynous look. I think men should wear more skirts and I think girls should wear tights. It's just beautiful. I have nothing bad to say about it. Angel Core. Angel Core is a contemporary aesthetic inspired by imagery and depictions of angels and is adjacent to Devil Core. It is very similar in vibe with the Rococo style of the 18th century. Some of the old paintings with sherbs you find on Pinterest are Rococo. The aesthetic is designed to emulate the same unearthly beauty that the European stereotype of angels are described and depicted with, though it can also include non-European angel aesthetics. This can be done with modern or older presentation methods. So the fashion includes silk and sheer fabrics, lace, feathers, long flowing light clothing, nightgowns and cords, flowers and floral pattern clothing, crosses, rosary, ballet, flats, sandals, light or natural makeup, fake halos and fake wings, dresses and jewelry. Honestly, it's kind of cute. I like it. I think we should add more representation, but that's just a thing that kind of any aesthetic is lacking, unfortunately. And it is deeply influenced by European culture. But I mean, it's cute. It's kind of slay. And it goes into the kind of slay rank. Angora. Angora is dark Japanese aesthetic and fashion that is often associated with the Eroguro art movement as well as visual K. The term is derived from the Japanese pronunciation of underground, which refers to its origins in underground theater. In terms of fashion, we, we have them heavily influenced by traditional Japanese elements as well as the Showa era, but with a goth spin to it. The makeup usually consists of shironuri and is dark and heavy, while kimono are the most commonly used by visual K artists. The style also often features modified Japanese school uniforms, such as seifuku and gakuran. Motifs and accessories are themed around post-war Japan and the occult. Honestly, 
I prefer the angel core just because I prefer less dark aesthetics but I can understand the necessity of labeling such an aesthetic so it would go into the okay fine category. No strong feelings about this one. Anime Core. Anime Core is an aesthetic revolving around the visual culture of Japanese anime and manga, glorifying the various Japanese animation and comic art styles that have existed through the decades as well as their popular series and characters. Personally, it's kind of a crickets category for me for Anime Core. But again, it's just, I think Anime Core is just such a well-referenced and understood aesthetic that at this point is it just become a cultural reset. In terms of fashion, we have anime graphic tops and bottoms, sailor uniforms, made dresses, pleated skirts, layered tulle skirts, loose leg warmers, printed thigh highs, striped socks, platform shoes, plush animal ears, colorful hairpins, scrunches with kawaii motifs, and big eye makeup. Due to my personal preferences, I think this will also go into the okay fine category, although we do give it a little bit of distinction of how popular it is with other people. So okay fine with special distinction. Anti-fashion. Anti-fashion is an umbrella term for various styles of dress which are explicitly contrary to the fashion of the day. Anti-fashion styles may represent an attitude of indifference or may arise from political practical goals which make fashion a secondary priority. It's basically anything in the trend made avant-garde or misused can work. The feel of the trend without the effort usually involves some element of D words or colorlessness. Anti fashion is more often than not done to completely go against established fashion trends until the fashion world eventually co-opts the fashions of the anti-fashion world and attempt to make it trendy and cool, which inevitably forces the anti-fashion world to evolve and change. So it's basically like the alternative aesthetics from the music, just going against the grain. And unfortunately, due to the fact that we do live in a capitalistic society, anything that can be commercialized will be commercialized. So if, if the anti-fashion movement gets a big following, then it just becomes fashion. So because of its kind of Sisyphus attempt to be different and quirky, it goes into the kind of slay category because it is ever-changing. Like there's no exact look that you would have in your mind when you think about anti-fashion because it will change depending on the period of time in history that you are. I like the concept, it should be thought through more. So we are about halfway through just the A letter at this point and I've been filming for like an hour now. So most probably this will be divided into each letter and 25 letters of the alphabet, 25 videos, oh my god. Anyway, Arcade Core. Arcade Core is an aesthetic that centers around how it feels to be a kid in the 80s or 90s. This aesthetic includes cheap plastic toys, neon signs, pizza, arcade games like Donkey Kong and Pac-Man, the patterns on the carpet floor, etc. This aesthetic could also include clothes or foods that reminds you of your childhood, such as Dunkaroos or a shirt with a frosted flakes tiger on it. And the decade of origin is 2010s. I think most probably this is just Stranger Things having its grip on everybody's lives for almost a decade now. Because honestly, the 80s style really became more popular with every time a new season drops. TV series actually and pop culture moments are very influential on the trends that we wear. I do have a video on how TV series shaped the trends of 2022 and Stranger Things is a part of it. So the fashion is very low-key or very bright and flashy. <laughs> Big one, but can draw inspiration from mall goth, nostalgia core, glow wave and vapor wave. Again, words that I don't know. So it's t-shirts, hoodies, hats with references to retro video games and nostalgic properties from the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s. Skinny jeans, shorts or skirts, fat pants, cheap plastic jewelry you'd get at a ticket booth, glow stick jewelry, sneakers, trainers, UV reactive clothing and dyed hair, fishnets, striped armbands. Honestly, kind of slay. Kind of slay. And I'm not afraid to say it. Next, we move on into art academia. We are dabbing our foot into the academia aesthetics, which are like 20, I think, different academia aesthetics. Because people like to romanticize learning instead of actually studying. And I can't blame them for it. I mean, it's infinitely more fun to light a candle and wear a vintage vest than to actually memorize all those terms you have for the exam tomorrow. Art academia is an academic aesthetic centered around the creation and enjoyment of art, including sculpture, painting, sketch, doodling, 
photography and calligraphy. It is similar to light academia and dark academia in its value of studying dedicated practice of learned interests 18th 19th century inspired aesthetics and architecture but is unique in focusing primarily on the visual arts. The fashion is. What you wear doesn't matter as long as you have an interest in studying arts and attend an educational department. Presumably, as for many students, comfort and availability are prioritized. Maybe having a couple of pockets to carry some pin tubes and brushes or a ponytail so the hair doesn't touch the canvas sound reasonable. Other examples can be colored shirts with puffy sleeves, berets, oxfords, corduroy overalls, braids, ponytails and messy buns, wool sweaters, loose t-shirts and earthy colors. So it's dark academia but with some pink brushes. And it's kind of slay. Art Deco. Oh, I love Art Deco. It's a 20th century aesthetic that emerged in France before World War I in the 1910s as a luxurious, highly decorated style. It flourished in the 1920s, 30s and 40s before gradually vanishing in the late 30s and World War II. Because of this, the style is highly associated with the Roaring Twenties and provided an escapade from the realities of the Great Depression during the 30s. There have been multiple revivals, some in the 80s and multiple today. Art Deco's influence permeated everything from architecture to film to jewelry. The style uses geometric forms, clean lines and is often angular and streamlined. Colors are usually bold and chosen for contrast. Patterns are bold and geometric, symmetrical or asymmetrical. Expensive materials were used, both natural, exotic woods, ivory mother of pearl and man-made, chrome, stainless steel, bakelite. So you're kind of already getting a vibe of where I might put it. It's a cultural reset, but let's look at the fashion first. Art Deco fashion followed a lot of the same rules laid out for its art and architecture, introducing lots of geometric shapes, long lines and exaggerated accessories. Art Deco fashion includes lots of evening gowns, skirts, hats and bias cut dresses. For women, the Art Deco period was the time of the flapper, a woman who bobbed their hair, loved jazz music, wore excessive makeup, drank, smoked, drove had casual s-word and generally took a proverbial piece on social norms at the time. The flapper sub-aesthetic in Art Deco was forever immortalized by the legendary cartoon character Betty Boop. I love it, it's iconic, it's a cultural reset. And we're going into the art ho. Oh my god, I know this one. Art ho is an aesthetic based around a love for art, a connection to nature, painting and flowers, and is symbolized by women who love art and nature. The aesthetic was created by Tumblr user a sensitive black person. Related aesthetics are of course cottagecore, plant mom and visco. Fashion is the mighty. Fjallraven and kanken bags. Anything associated with art, mom jeans, graphic tees, converse sneakers of any color, art socks, art supplies, paint, overalls, painted overalls, shirts with thin horizontal stripes, striped meadow shirts, any mustard yellow clothing, yes. The mustard yellow clothing is essential for being an art hope. Pants old school, checkered slip ons, classics, Doc Martens and Mary Jane's colorful hair clips. So basically, art hope aesthetic is like the art academia aesthetic, but just more modern. The academia's aesthetics are usually very like 18th, 19th century kind of vibes while Art Ho is more grounded into what is fashionable now, or at least what was fashionable when it was created, which was in the 2010s. Honestly, cultural reset. It goes right next to Art Deco, but like, it's my ranking. Those are as culturally significant, in my opinion. <laughs> Asian baby girl. The ABG aesthetic is a subculture that contradicts the modal minority stereotypes that are expected of Asian American women, such as being studious, obedient, and passive. We like breaking stereotypes. It originated with Chinese American female gangster in the 90s, but can apply to any East or Southeast Asian Europe American ethnicity. It is now most strongly associated with Southeast Asian Americans, particularly those of Vietnamese descent. In its early stages, the term ABG was associated with Asian American gangster subcultures. ABG was considered derogatory and had many implications of violent behavior, low intelligence, S-work, D-word usage, and assimilation of negative aspects of Western culture. Due to the decline of organized crime among Asian Americans, views of the subculture have greatly softened. Now most ABGs are Asian American girls who have no gang connections but simply adopt this aesthetic to be subversive, escape academic stress, 
and or gain confidence to socialize while breaking Asian stereotypes. So in terms of fashion, we have large hoop earrings, blonde hair dye, tattoos, dragons and Chinese characters being the most common, false lashes, spaghetti straps, coffin nails, bralettes, tube tops, baggy sweatpants, jerseys, shiny lipstick, eye contacts instead of glasses for people who wear them, or colored contacts. Very slay. Very slay energy. It's very distinctive aesthetically, I feel like I could not confuse it with any kind of aesthetic. Yeah, related aesthetics are very femme fatale, but this is just making it mm, specific to a certain demographic. But it's kind of slay. Yeah, I love it. So we move on onto the athlete aesthetic, which is an aesthetic that is centered around sports and sportswear of any kind, whether it's worn for athletic competition or for supporting said sports team. Already kind of okay, fine vibes, to be honest. I'm not a sports person, so I can't connect with it. The most sport I do is going to the grocery store. That's my hiking routine. The fashion is typical sports-specific garments, including tracksuits, sports, running shorts, t-shirts, polo shirts, loose-fitting gym clothing. Specialized garments might include swimsuits, wetsuits, ski suits, leotards, posing trunks, board shorts. Honestly, I'm really struggling with finding cute sportswear, and I feel like that might be a universal experience. So it's going into the okay fine category. Sportswear, please do better. We need an art host athlete aesthetic collaboration yeah we can do that <laughs>